among these uh, this group in this group. So we'll look at that too. So I think the first thing to do is to review the endings of the third dimension nouns. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so do you want to let me see right up those endings? What we've what we've said is in, in, the, in the singular for the but here we're only talking about, since we're talking about people, we're only talking about masculine slash feminine endings. So the nominative, the genitive, the dative, and the accusative are in, in the singular, the ending is an S, which goes away a lot. And the genitive, os, and the dative, omega, and the accusative, alpha. And then in the plural. That's important. <laughs> yes. Problem, like all general tools, C, right, and the problems that that S presents, and then S, okay, uh, those are short vowels, sure. alpha as well as in the accusative singular. Okay. So, what we're looking at here in in this part of the unit 10 are these this group of words that are, as you might expect for words for mother and father and and daughter and stuff like that, they're, they're, they preserve older forms because they're common and they're really old words. Um, the, the fact that their forms are older does not mean that the endings are any different from the ones that we just put down. Mm -hmm. so, so actually, for, when it comes to recognizing them, it's not a serious problem. So if we look at, for example, the book gives you the word for mother, mete, if you write down the problem, just look at the forms. It's going to be key on the first thing. And, and here's one of the weirdnesses. In the genitive, it's metros, okay, with an acute accent on the genitive, on the genitive ending. Okay, that's an archaism. Okay, and the same goes for metri. This is remember we've seen this in monosyllabic mm -hmm. nouns of the first of the third declension, like nux, nuktos, nukti, and nukta, right? Okay accent switches, but we haven't seen it in any any other form, so this is just a grammatical accent. And then the accusative singular, you see the other weird thing that you see, that happens with these is you get metera with a different suffix upon which you're adding the, the, the case ending. So you've got tr for the genitive and the dative, and ter um, at the end for the accusative. So you see that alternation again, and all the plural forms of meter are based on the T-E-R suffix, so it's meteres, you know, like up there, meteres, and then in the, mm -hmm. in the accusative plural, meteros, with the, the accents on the E, actually, not on oh. the A, A. Yeah, you would expect it to be there, yeah. so that was a good call. You see, but it's meteres and meteros. Mm -hmm. And again, the accent on it. And then it's metron and meteron. No, you got, you're right, you're right. Meteron is right. Okay. And, and no, and the cute on the, cute on the, on the E again. So meteres, meteron. Let's leave the data for, out for the moment. And meteros for the accusative plural. No, no, you are okay there. Maybe you can move it down a little bit. Yeah. Meteros with the cute again on the E. Okay. So you notice that that's a pattern when the when the stuff when the stem is meter, the accent goes on the e. So the accusative singular meter on meteros meteron and meteros. Okay, but the dative is is based on the, the stem that you see in metros and metri. That is met, and then and then what happens is because you can't have metros in Greek, you develop the r turns into ra. Okay, it's a regular thing. So there's an acute on the ra there. Um, and the new there is a new movable. So many parentheses around it. So if you look at the book, for example, when it comes to the word that means male human being, aner, okay, um, and also husband, that's why it belongs in this group as a kinship term. Aner, it goes aner, andros, okay, you can look at this maybe in the book. Andras, Andri, and Andra, okay, they're all from the dr suffix that you also see in the dative plural, Andrasi, and the genitive plural, Andras, and Andres, okay, so that there you have at least consistency for the, in the ending, it's dr, okay, 
but it, it's it's again you have the same kind of data flow with a DRA as you have a Nath proxy. Um, let, let's look at the book doesn't give it to you, but let's look at the the other nouns that are like this are pater, um, pater, patros is the genitive, and then yes, is a cute accent on the and, uh, um, and then it was patri and patera, patera like my terra and so forth, um, and fugate. It has the same inflection, patera with a Q. And fugater looks exactly the same. This is actually the same word as English daughter. So if fugate gives you, gives you daughter in English, you can see this is the G and the T E R in English daughter. And in Sanskrit it's duchita, so it's the same word. And he's a real, he's a real Indo European word mm -hmm. for the Visavia family. Thugatras, Thugatri, and Thugatri, and then Thugatera. Right? Um, when it comes to the word for woman, the nominative, this is, is somewhat different, but I think you might need some more room, so maybe you can do another one. The nominative is Gune, with an Eda, and an acute accent. And then the genitive is Gunai Kos, with an acute accent on the Os again. Gunai Ki. Mm -hmm. All right, well, it's the second one in the series. <laughs> that works for me too. Gunaiki. And then Gunaika with a circumflex over the AI, right? You remember this, right? Okay. So, so that's a, that's a, a, a stem like you won't see in any other <laughs> Greek noun, right? Where we get gynecology coming from. It's actually cognate with the English word queen. Wow. Queen. Queen. And, like Guinevere is the same thing in, in uh, Welsh and Celtic languages. Um, and uh, so Gwyn comes out as Gwyn in Greek. And so you very, again, very old words. All right, um, maybe we can stop there. <laughs>